Hi, this is Ansible for Network Engineers Part 5. Today I'll look at why you should be passing network device data and the benefit it can provide when moving to automated testing. I'll be using the Cisco Pi ATS Ansible collection to achieve this. We'll run through a couple of simple examples to show you what can be achieved. In the first example, let's say that we want to use Ansible to deploy some network configuration. It doesn't matter what that configuration is, but we've been asked to automate the pre and post change checks. The customer has asked us to validate that the same CDP neighbors are present both before and after our configuration has been applied. We need to create an automated baseline, deploy the change, check the neighbors are still the same after the change and report if they differ. If we simply ran a show CDP neighbor command pre and post and compared the difference, they would always be different. Why? Because we always have a timer in the output. In this case, it's the whole time. Most output has some sort of timer. A couple of examples would be the dead time in OSPF neighbors, BGP up down time, or the last time a route was updated in the IP route table. This makes capturing the command itself in unstructured form pointless from an automated test perspective, as there will always be differences in the stored pre and post output. And as demonstrated in this case, it's the whole time. If I were to baseline my CDP neighbors in their lowest useful form, I would ideally want to know which neighbors I have and from which interfaces they have been learned. I could then trust that this device was in the same state from a CDP perspective after the change had been deployed. The best way to farm this data is to pass the device output to the relevant fields I require and variableize that data. Ansible provides many parsers as part of its NetCommon inbuilt collection. In this demonstration, I'll use the Pi ATS collection against the CLI's unstructured data. I'll stick a link to the documentation in the description below. I'm going to test against R6 in my home lab. I'll create an empty dictionary for CDP neighbors and interfaces, use the CLI pass module and pass the show CDP neighbors command. I'll set the parser to be pi ATS, create the CDP output variable using the setFact command. Finally, I'll debug the output so we can see how the data looks. We've now converted all of the unstructured show CDP neighbor data into a dictionary we can iterate over and pull out the values as we need. Looking at the output, we'll need to loop over cdp underscore output dot cdp dot index, which will give us access to the key value pairs in the dictionary. The numbers 1, 2 and 3 are items, and we want the value of the device ID field. Let's have a look at what this looks like within the code we need to write. I'm going to create a list called cdp neighbors and allow entries to be appended to that list by referencing the variable again. Otherwise, we would end up with only the last entry in the loop as it would get overwritten on each iteration. I'll then filter by item value device ID and loop over the output of cdp output .cdp index. Finally, I'll debug the output so we can see how the data looks. I've now got all three cdp neighbors filtered by host name. I'll count these by simply using the count filter in case I want to use this data at some point in the future. Now, I can filter the local interface values in the same way I did for the device ID fields. Finally, I have the data I need. I can combine them together using the zip function and sort by interface name. By sorting, I can always expect the data to be formatted in the same way each time, allowing me to compare pre and post results quickly and efficiently. Let's build a use case. I've added a task to close an interface on the device and to wait 30 seconds for CDP to drop. We'll then run exactly the same checks again, but change the variables to be defined as post checks. We can then check if the pre variable matches the post variable and output a message accordingly for pass or fail. When the interface is shut, the checks fail. I'll hash out the tasks to close the interface and wait for CDP to drop. 
reopen the routers interface and run the tests again. This time the pre and post will match so we'll get a success message. Let's have a look at another example, this time interface status. Very similar to the first example using R6, but this time I want to grab just a list of interfaces that are in upstate. This time I'll pass the show IP interface brief command. PyATS has structured a nice dictionary for us to use, and I just want to grab the item and the status. Easy to do by printing each item by looping through the output. I'll also create a test variable here, just so we can see the item and values within our output for demonstration purposes. We won't use this in the rest of the code. And I'll output the interface status by looping over the item.value.status, which you'll be able to see in the output from the task above. All I have to do now is combine the data and I have a dictionary of interface names and their matching statuses. But I only want interfaces that are up, so I'll add a when statement to check that only those interfaces are captured. In the same way I did in the first example, I'll build a use case. This time, I'll close loopback 111 and gather the same data, calling the variables post. We can then check if the pre variable matches the post variable and output a message accordingly for pass or fail. Finally, to make the output a little more slick, I'll iterate over the keys and compare the dictionaries item by item. Ternary returns the first value if the input is pass and the second if the value is fail, and then print the result. The PyATS parser returns data in the same structure for most of the supported commands. I'll put a link in the description below to the commands supported by different operating systems. If you've already started automated configuration deploys, it's definitely worth looking at automating your testing. The two examples shown below are basic and for demonstration purposes only. PyATS becomes extremely powerful when you start comparing over multiple baselines and devices. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing or drop me a like. All the code is available in my GitHub, link below, along with the links connected to this video.